Hello guys, welcome back to Archangel RC. Today we have yet another new Volantex model, the Phoenix 2400. I have to say, I don't think there is another company out there that is putting out so many new models currently and they are actually pretty darn good performers. So, the Phoenix 2400. There isn't really much to talk about, especially if you've already seen my Phoenix V2 video and mainly because this plane is pretty much the same only bigger. When I got the V2 a few months back I thought it was big but now looking at it next to the 2400 it feels kinda small. I did move over all of the electronics from the V2 to the new one including the autopilot so this one was ready for flight pretty quickly. One big difference between the two at least for me was the fact that the v2 couldn't take a larger battery than the 1800 mAh 4s i was using otherwise it would become too nose heavy while this one it will be running with the 4s 6000 mAh lithium ion pack from my dart xl and even so it would benefit from a slightly heavier battery so perhaps 4s 9000 mAh lithium ion is not that far out of the question one more thing that i changed upon receiving the phoenix 2000 400 was the motor. Volantex did mention that they have an 850 kV version of their 1050 kV motor that comes stock with these plug and play sets so I asked for one to test it out hoping it would give me improved efficiency and would allow me to use a larger prop as well because a 2.4 meter wingspan model does deserve a slightly larger prop than 10 or 11 inches which would also help with that improved efficiency. I don't have a larger prop yet but am in the process of obtaining Training one. So, with a lower KV motor and a bigger battery, I was ready to get this one flying. It was as easy to launch as the smaller one. Just give it throttle and toss it and it just takes off nice and calm. The lower KV can definitely be felt, but with a larger prop I think we will get to a more lively climb later on. Good news is, even though the current readings on the OSD are not exactly calibrated, they are much lower than what I remember from before, so the lower KVs really do make a difference and the plane still flies so really don't have much to complain about and I do have three times the capacity from the smaller V2 so theoretically this might be able to stay up there for at least an hour of powered flight which I'm not going to be testing today because it is just too darn cold. However, after doing some trimming and making sure the Omnibus F4 Pro is stabilizing properly and I hadn't messed up the wiring when installing the electronics, I engaged the pre-programmed special mission because, you know, recently a plane just isn't good enough for active service unless it can complete that mission to earn its place. Good news is the Phoenix performed it perfectly as the GPS track shows. Bad news is I had set it too high for this day's atmospheric conditions, so it pretty much flew it into the clouds that were hanging over the city and I couldn't see much most of the time except for the OSD data. After completing the mission I decided to try and get it above the cloud so started to gain some altitude. Sadly it turned out that the layer was quite thick this day. Even all the way up to 600 meters I didn't get over it so I turned back down. Here is a tip how to get water away from the camera because flying in clouds usually does get it wet. Go into manual mode, point the nose down and give it throttle. It will clear it up pretty quickly. After this little trip I decided to test the store characteristics which were bloody excellent. Excellent. What a surprise, right? No tip stall at all, just a tight turn and the moment I let go of the elevator it would go straight and level so I decided to have some fun with it. Flaps down, elevator slightly up and drop the speed as low as possible and just flew it around me for a while and honestly it is quite impressive to see a huge plane such as this being flown in such a tight space at such a slow speed. But I guess that extra wing length and wing cord do make a difference even with the added weight of a larger plane and a larger battery. Just look at how stable it is despite the slow speed and even in turns it was rock solid most of the time even though I was close to stalling it a few times and any other plane would have hit the ground but with this one just give it throttle and a little up elevator and it was out of danger and coming around for yet another low pass. This was so much fun. Oh, 
And just so you don't end up being disappointed, here are some nice aerial shots of the Phoenix 2400 courtesy of my Phantom 3 Pro. I let the Phoenix do an auto mission and just chased it around. I did remember to program slower flight speed so I can more easily catch up to it. And the results were pretty good indeed. This was actually a second flight for the Phoenix but I didn't recharge the battery after the first, just changed the mission. I think it flew a total of over 40 minutes between the two flights and the battery still had more. I only landed because my hands were now frozen for a second time that day and I also had a Ranger 2400 to fly equipped with the same wings as the Phoenix and with an HD video system but more on that in its own video. So what can I say about the Phoenix 2400? I absolutely love it. Yes it is larger and bulkier than the 2 meter wingspan V2 but gives you so much more capability purely because it can take a much larger battery but doesn't draw many more amps so you will get extended flight times. If you can replace the motor with a lower KV1 on 4S with a larger prop, even better. It is quite obvious that these larger wings have more lift than the ones on the V2 and that helps when you want to go low and slow which in turn makes landings ridiculously smooth. I also feel like it glides more efficiently compared to its smaller brother and that huge horizontal stabilizer and elevator give you a lot of control which is definitely needed when going slow. I do have to mention that also the control horns locations on these new wings are placed in the middle of the control surfaces which is always the best way to do this and will give you more precise and locked in control of the plane. It is generally a very good model and I will definitely keep pushing it. Next time I'm out flying I will do a proper endurance with this battery hopefully in better sunnier weather conditions and I might even throw in the one I built for the Nano Talon which is using the same cells so it will essentially become a 4S 3P pack with around 9000 milliamp hour capacity weighing in at 600 grams which should be okay once I remove the black canopy cover and the run cam too that I now use as additional weight in the nose. Would definitely go over 60 minutes of active flight. If I also hunt for thermals and glide it should be much longer but perhaps it might be a good idea to put in a Telefly Pro board for my antenna tracker which would make things so much easier. But all of that is for next time. Until then links for all items shown and used in this video can be found in the description below and using any of them to buy literally anything from those websites would help support this channel and you will have my eternal gratitude as that is how I make my living. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. If you have enjoyed this video and found it useful please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and also consider following me on Facebook for more regular updates. I wish you happy flying and until next time.